Hey everybody, Will here from MachineLovis.com, here with uh, another episode in the YouTube data analysis system. I'm calling it Clout for now. I don't have a better name for it. So in this episode, what we are going to do is deploy and application. <clears throat> in the last video, we did a D3. Uh, we don't have it into our app yet. Currently, our app is just this uh, <laughs> is this essentially template that we just pulled directly from this Flask Vue.js template. Uh, we are using Flask REST Plus with Vue.js. Flask REST Plus is a fantastic way to make uh, rest, RESTful applications off of Flask. It's like, I guess, an extension of Flask. <clears throat> Vue.js is a recent JavaScript framework that I don't know much about, but I heard is relatively easy for folks who don't know too much about JavaScript frameworks. This template is great for beginners. It's great for deploying quickly to Heroku. If you want to deploy to Heroku, which I've done in the past, Heroku, Heroku is a fantastic solution. Um, you can do that with almost one click here. I want to go the hard route, a harder route, and deploy this with AWS, I'm going to be using Elastic Beanstalk. I'm doing that because I, because I, other things that we've done in this series are in the AWS ecosystem, and I think it'll be cheaper in the long run, or maybe just in the short run, to get this going with Elastic Beanstalk. So stick around. In this video, we are going to take this uh, Flask Vue.js template uh, which we have we have been working on. We've we've been working inside a little bit. It's just the place where the code that we've been doing has lived, and we are going to uh, deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so if you download this template and follow the instructions that are in here, uh, you'll eventually get to this live demo. This live demo that is attached to this Git re repo is. Uh, is hosted with Heroku and it's slow to come up because it's on the free tier and that takes a while if you you know if you haven't warmed it up a bit in a while so this has come up now this is what you'll see if you just follow through locally the setup with it uh, it's a nice clean little demo um, it has a lot of these Vue.js and Flask things out of the bag out of the box um, so follow along with that and get that working locally. And then with uh, what you will have is a Python Flask web server running. And for development purposes, you will have Yarn running. So that's what I have in both of these places. Now I've modified mine a bit uh, and I will show you how I did that. But essentially, let me just... Let me just, um, I have this in, uh, in prior videos, what I've done is get a, a pip environment. There are a lot of different Python environments. This uses, this uses pip shell, I think is right. And so, um, what I am running over here, yarn serve is the, essentially Vue.js client that will allow me when I make changes to the JavaScript or HTML to see those changes come through live without having to restart the application. And then when I run uh, Python, and I have changed this to application.py, and I will talk about that, why I need to do that in just a minute. When I run Python application.py, I get an error that the address is already in use but I will have the Flask uh, web server started. Now with Elastic Beanstalk, what we are going to do, one of the, this took me a while to figure out by the way, we're, we are not going to have Yarn running or Node.js running web server. We are just going to be using Flask for this and we will have built NPM run build to create static assets and deploy those. And when we do that, we will get this clout.us east. This is the, uh, this is the region. So this is the name of the environment clout. 
US East is the region, elasticbeanstock.com. And we essentially have the demo with, with a little bit of uh, things that were done to it. I essentially slightly modified, I just removed some text. But what you'll notice what popped up earlier is a newer version of the website that I actually want to deploy. I want to update what I already have running. So let me go back and get into Elastic Beanstalk now and talk about how I deployed this version um, to Elastic Beanstalk because that took me a little while. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to AWS. Let me back out of this here. I go into my, I sign in as my root user. And then I go to, so we have Elastic Beanstalk, which is essentially a wrapper around EC2 instances, Elastic Compute instances. A lot of things in AWS services are just essentially wrappers around EC2. But what you'll see is this interface and you can go through, I have clout here, I created that, but you can create a new environment if you don't have one. They give you two options here, web server or worker. Um, worker is interesting to me, it's for long running workloads uh, that we don't have yet, but might have in the future. We are gonna select web server and then just run through here, you know, select your uh, select your platform. Where I'm not using Go, I'm not using Docker. I might in the future, but just select Python, and then you get, you know, Python 3.6. You put in a name here. You get a pre-configured platform. You don't really do need to do anything. You could upload your data as a zip file. I prefer using the terminal client tools, and then when you click create environment it'll essentially bring you to uh to this okay which will give you a running version a configuration a health check there are a lot of things here that you can check out logs there are a lot of things here and um i won't pretend to know all of them so just just check it out um but what what this is essentially is just a running instance that you can start uploading code to. And how you do that, I do it through uh, a terminal. Once you get your permissions and all the configuration set up, which um, isn't really too bad, what you have is this EB command, which is Elastic Beanstalk, where you tap into all of this and uh, it's configured here that I can deploy via a branch. I accidentally named a branch Y, but I merged all of my features that I wanted, um, that I wanted to check out. I merged those all to master, and I'm not sure why master is having an issue at the moment. And just pull. So what am I gonna be able to do now? So what I'll show you is how you can actually SSH into your running machine, how you'll deploy. What well, our goal for this video is, is to get this, you know, revamped outline of the website deployed this is currently in my local dev environment. I want to get it deployed here into clout and, and to have it show up. Okay, so I am on master. And so there are a few critical commands. What I'm going to do is because I'm on master, I'm going to go EB deploy. There's some EB commands that you need to do before this. Uh, to set up your website. But what this is doing, it's creating a new version archive. And then it's going to upload, the, upload that version to my running Elastic Beanstalk instance. Now, I think Elastic Beanstalk will host up to like 500 different versions actually physically on the machine. 
And what's neat is in just a minute, we can SSH into that machine and see what's going on there. While that's uploading, let me talk a little bit about what you get. So here is, let's see. <clears throat> when you initialize Elastic Beanstalk, you get this config.yaml, which goes through essentially everything about the environment that we saw when we went online and looked at it. We have Python 3.6. We have a Linux machine in US East. <clears throat> then what you can do is EB extensions, which will get you more, um, more leverage out of config files that you can upload. And I messed around with that for a while, trying to get Node.js to work before I realized I just need Flask. This uploaded successfully. So what I can do now is do EB open to open uh, the new web page where this is living. And so it will open. It's giving me welcome to clout. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> so it didn't update. It didn't update. I wanted, I want this. This is the version that I see locally that I've spent time manipulating. And this is the older version that's not very interesting to me. Okay, so what I could do is check out EB logs. This is the first thing that you might want to check if you don't know what's going on to try and figure out what's happening on your instance. So you can just parse through here, running, running, exiting. There's an error log. So it looks like there were some errors. There's no no such file directory, current app dist. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can figure out here just by taking a look at the logs and reading through it. Definitely that traceback is very interesting. So a few things that I realized. One is that uh, Elastic Beanstalk is looking for certain files at least for Flask. They're looking for an application.py. They need an application. Uh, they need you not to be running in debug mode. They're also looking for, uh, at least for static sites, uh, the static URL path. So with Vue.js, what we do to get this deployed is we can do npm run build which will generate uh, the static resources. And what I did with Vue.js per a great Stack Overflow answer is to point my view config JS into the app slash static. Um, I needed to do this because Flask can find my static resources. So you might not need to do, do this, but if, if Flask isn't finding uh, the resources that you need, you might need to do that. You also need to uh, commit, I did this, I'm not actually sure I needed to do it, but you needed to commit your node modules. And if it's in your git ignore, uh, which is something git is not tracking, then, um, then you won't be able to commit it. So now, my npm run build has made my uh, deployment ready assets. So I am going to, what's neat about this Flask Vue.js template is that it's, it does a linting every time you commit. I might disable that because it's kind of annoying, but I can do no verify to get past it. It looks like it's still running. <clears throat> I didn't put a space in my no verify. Okay. So now I am, um, okay. Let's commit this other file. Same message, git push origin master. Okay, that pushed. So now what I'm gonna do is eb deploy 
and let's see what gets deployed this time. Okay, so that took a minute or so, but it deployed. Again, you could do EB logs to get your logs and check out what happened. Uh, this is still not exactly what I want. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this actually deployed the version of the site that I wanted. Beautiful, so that is live now. I didn't know that would work, but it, it did. So, fantastic. But I wanna show you that you can also SSH into the environment. And when you do that, you actually get onto the machine. And just to remind myself, you can see where your code lives. So if you check out this right here is my entire version of the, the stack that I'm using and located right in opt Python current slash app. If I go there, I have all of my, my entire application right there. So Elastic Beatstock is just easy to use. And so this, this is the version locally, localhost. But if I go to Clout, uh, what is it? Clout US East Elastic Beanstalk, then this older version is there. But I refresh and now the newer version is up. So it's just that easy. So in the next video, what we need to figure out is how to use Vue.js to get the kind of site that we want. We might wanna put a blog on here. What we do need to do though, is to feed data from all the data that we've been storing in DynamoDB and get it into a D3 and put it on this site. We're using Elastic Beanstalk and so we can monitor it via AWS and all the monitoring systems of AWS uh, but now we have something actually deployed on the web that we can start iterating on. Well, that's it for today. So let me know what you think, and we will start moving this forward faster. All right, take care, everybody.